pumpkins. We're getting to that time of the year, Holly, where it will be nights getting colder and pumpkins will be getting ripe, if not already ripe, on the vine. Yeah, so there's a, a lot of different things you can do with pumpkins, and there's over 50 varieties of pumpkins. Well, yes, uh, multitudes of varieties of pumpkins, and many people you know, many people may think that you know pumpkins are just for carving and decoratory purposes, but there are other things that are very valuable that you can use pumpkins for. Right, and so 95% of the pumpkin crops are grown in Illinois. Did you know that? I, I knew that. <laughs> so that's kind of cool, um, or a fun fact, especially if you're from Illinois. An Il Illinoisan. An Illin Illinoisan? Yes. Illinoisan? No, no, it's not. It's an Illinoisan. I, uh, mm, okay. Close enough. Like Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, Abraham Lincoln wasn't born in Illinois. No, he, he was not in Kentucky. Right. There's your history lesson for this history, morning, history. Uh, for today, boys and girls. Um, <laughs> pumpkins can be uh, can be difficult to grow uh, due to the fact that one, they take up a tremendous amount of space, and two, they can and are susceptible to many diseases, most prevalently uh, uh, powdery mildew, which can really shut the plant down during any portion of the growth cycle. Now, pumpkins can be as little as six ounces or as large as about 2,500 pounds. Uh, I think somewhere in that range. Uh, I don't know what the current world record for pumpkin growing is, but it's upwards over a ton, I believe. Uh, that's a full-time job where you've got to take the seed and baby it and tent. Yeah, you, and, you really are babying the pumpkin at that point. And those seeds are extremely, extremely valuable and have a high commodity, a high high price on them. So what it, people, there's other things you can do with besides carving a pumpkin. Uh, we find that, you know, all pumpkins are edible. However, based on the type of pumpkin, makes it more of a pleasant or more pleasurable consumption of the pie or soup or whatever that case is. Well, here's the thing is yes. that there are pie pumpkins. Right. And so if you are going to grow pumpkins for making pie or uh, pumpkin smoothies or whatever, you want to grow the pie pumpkins because they have a higher sugar content. Yes. Um, and, you know, we have grown uh, what is called a Jardel pumpkin. Yeah. It's a blue skin pumpkin, very bright orange flesh inside, and the walls are about four and a half inches thick. Very small seed cavity. Very meaty pumpkin. It is the most smoothest, most uh, delicate tasting pumpkin that you've ever eaten. Great for pumpkin pies. That's really what we have uh, used it for. We'll get into how you can preserve these pumpkins uh, momentarily, but... Uh, you can you can eat a Jack Laren pumpkin. However, these have been bred over decades for that quick, thin wall, easy to carve capabilities. That's the the primary goal of it's a Jack. It's more Lantern. stringy too. Yes, it's yeah, very it's not, stringy. It's not meaty. So Jack Laren pumpkins are bred to become Jack o' Lanterns, and then there's pie pumpkins, and then there's even um, like different decorative pumpkins. Some of them will have like the the knots on the outside that make kind of cool decorations. Uh, well, it's kind of I think there's one called a peanut pumpkin. It's got the sugar yeah. sugar capsules on the outside. Uh, those are good. You can make dumplings out of them. Or we made dumplings out of some kind of pumpkin one time. I thought it was a jardel, but maybe, uh, something, else. maybe something else. Yeah. Yeah. Now the seeds are edible. They can be roasted. Many people find that a very exciting portion of their fall is you can roast the pumpkin seeds and then you can season them however you want. You can also do what we have done in the past is make pumpkin flour and pumpkin seed flour. This is a, an option for you uh, maybe if you don't consume gluten or if you want a high fiber flour. Pumpkins themselves are high in fiber and then when you dehydrate the, the whether, whether it be the seeds or the pumpkin, um, and then grind it into a flour that's a high fiber flour as well. Now, this is not, I'm going to make a pie and I'm going to use an all pumpkin flour. There is a ratio, and I, if I remember correctly, it is like three parts fl uh, pumpkin flour to one part. No, it's one part pumpkin flour. flour. Okay. To three parts. Th there's a regular. ratio. You, yeah. ha you can't just use it all the pumpkin flour. And what pumpkin flour is, you take the pumpkin flesh, grind it up to smaller pieces, 
dehydrate it, and then grind it to a powder or a flour consistency, that's your flour. Same thing with the seeds. The seeds, you let them dry, you grind them, to pulverize them to a powder, pumpkin seed flour. That's as easy as it is. Right. So that is... And there is a shelf life on these as well. Right. They will go... Uh, Just like any flour, it'll go bad. Right. Um, it'll go essentially rancid because it's a more natural... Yeah, not, it's, not, it's, it's all natural. natural. <laughs> I mean, it's not more natural, but it's because it's not like wheats where... Wheat is made to dry and to um, store. Uh, pumpkin flour is not necessarily made that way. So you could put it in your freezer to keep it fresh. That's mm -hmm. an option. Um, as opposed to just on the shelf to keep it fresh or longer. But, but just like anything that you have in your home, there is a shelf life on it. And at a certain point, it will go bad unless you've bought a sandwich at a fast food restaurant and french fries that will sit underneath your child's booster seat for seven years and still be as good as the day you bought them most of the stuff that you're growing or buying at the farmer's market there's a short shelf life and it will decompose and turn into compost material much more rapidly than what you may expect right so there's a lot you can do with pumpkins what, what can we do well one is you can whip up some pumpkin puree um so that sounds good but if you and so like for pie like for pie or you can make like a pumpkin butter okay where you add some pumpkin spices and some sugar and it's you know something that you can just like put on some toast or something so the but to the to the pumpkin butter um you cannot can pumpkin butter safely however you can can apple butter safely because the Veloc the what is the the thickness of it? Yeah, it's more viscous. More viscous. We yeah. made this mistake. Oh, about a decade ago, we had canned pumpkin butter, and then we found out that it's not safe to do that. So we poured all that pumpkin butter out. I think we froze a lot of it. We froze it, but yeah. we had processed it, not knowing it was not safe to do. Now, could we have consumed it? And been okay? Sure, why not? But we wasn't going to take that opportunity to to test. How fortunate we may or may not have been. Um, so that's one thing with pumpkin. If you're going to can pumpkin, you have to can it. You have to pressure can it. And you have to do it in cubes. Right. So you want to cube it and then you want to pressure can it. And when we say cube it, we say like one inch cubes. Like uh, large dice. Right. Yeah. Um, and this is because your pressure canner, your home pressure canner only gets so hot and it can only get or penetrate into so far into a jar that's why you don't want to can pumpkin butter either um so that's why cubing it and having you basically give it a chance with the water to get to the center of the jar to um, help purify the ingredients now whenever you can't pressure can it and then it's time to use it for something you pop the lid off you drain the liquid off and that has already been cooked for you it is already you just take and smash it up, and it's already basically pureed for you because the process in which you've canned it, it saves you time on the back end of the procedure. Right, and this is something that if you were going to make like a pumpkin soup or a pumpkin pie or a pumpkin smoothie, all of those, you would use this canned pumpkin, pumpkin bread, um, anything that calls for regular canned pumpkin at the store, that's what you can use this for. And the canned pumpkin at the store is not always, you have to really read the label, not always 100% pumpkin. They do, there are some manufacturers that incorporate up to 50% butternut squash in with the pumpkin to stretch the um, the batch, I guess is what you would say. Now talk about the, the pumpkin smoothies. You've made these before and they are not bad at all because you've added, it's not pure pumpkin. Now, you've, you've added some things in there, but it, it is a very good, thick, fulfilling. You're not hungry anymore after you drink it smoothly. Right. So typically what I add is um, I add a protein powder, whatever kind you want. I would suggest vanilla because it gives it that like nice creamy flavor. And then I will add a lot of times some yogurt. If the pumpkin doesn't taste super sweet, like say we didn't use a real sugar pumpkin, I would, um, or a pie pumpkin, whatever, I sometimes add a banana, and it doesn't really overpower. You don't even notice no, it. No, you don't notice it. It gets a nice pumpkin-y flavor, but it, the banana sweetens that pumpkin. Um, and then some pumpkin spice, 
usually, so it kind of tastes like a pumpkin pie. If I don't use a little yogurt, I'll use like some almond milk or non-dairy milk. You can use dairy milk as well. Um, so yeah, that's what I use. I think that's it. That that yeah. sounds about right. Yeah. Now, one thing that you know people will like people like to juice anything they can get a hold of. We tried juicing pumpkin many years ago, and for whatever reason, there is this most horrible <laughs> it's odor. Like, yeah, and then the smell is the second kick in in the rear end. It tastes bad. It tastes terrible. Yeah, I, I would not. Ju- Maybe if you could juice pumpkin with something yeah, sweet. Yeah, one ounce. Uh, yeah. One one ounce of pumpkin juice. And ten gallons of water should <laughs> you should be able to cut it pretty good like well, that. If you could juice it with something sweet, but the smoothie back to the smoothie. Yes, go ahead. If you want it to be really cold, you can add ice, or you can just like put your pumpkin. Almost like a, a, a pumpkin milkshake. Yeah, or you can put your pumpkin, all the ingredients, keep those in the fridge, and then when you when you blend it up, I don't add ice to my smoothies, um, but when you blend it up. If you keep it on the fridge, it should stay pretty cold. So let's. Let, how do we get to that preparation if we are not going to or do not feel safe or whatever the case is? Reason being that you don't want to pressure can your pumpkin. You can cook it down, turn it into a puree, and then freeze it so it is ready to go. But you want to freeze it in a measurement in which you can use that whole measurement without having to thaw it, refreeze it, thaw it, refreeze it, thaw it, refreeze it. Right. Yeah, you wanna you want to measure it. So if you know that like you use two cups of pumpkin for two people in a smoothie, that's how you'd want to freeze it. Um, that would be would be best. Also, a lot of people will use pumpkin puree and feed their their babies with uh-huh. it because it's like a really good baby food. I did this and I took some of those like silicone muffin trays, not for we don't have children for my niece and nephew, um, and I put them in the silicone muffin trays froze it and then i was able to pop those out and then it was like a little disc and my sister would thaw it and feed her children and you can always take uh if you are a homesteader or you've got a farm and you know that after the fall festival celebrations that there will be a lot of jack-o'-lanterns left uh laying around there's a lot of avenues in which you can advertise hey i'll take your free old pumpkins uh for animal consumption you know whether uh, you have, um, whether you have, um, you know, hogs or I think cows will eat some of it, uh, goats, you know, there's a lot of different avenues in which you can, uh, get some free feed off of that as well. So, a uh, small snippet of what you can do with pumpkins as we get closer, whether you are growing them or you're going to a fall, fall festival or a pick your own farm. Uh, keep in mind what your end goal is and then what you can use it for after the accomplishment of the one goal is completed. Right. So speaking of preserving pumpkins um, or preserving in general, the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from. You might want to can, preserve, get a bunch of pumpkins. That's great. But what about the meat? At Walton's Inc., you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's created MeatGistics.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, and sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's is everything but the meat. Hey there, gardeners. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. If you like what you've seen, you can search through the channel and find full in-studio videos of the entire show. If you want to go another route, you can search for it on your favorite podcast platform by searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show or the Gardening with Joey and Holly Radio Show, and you can download it and take it with you. You can check out all past seasons at our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, under the radio tabs at the top of the page. We thank you for joining us. We hope you've learned and enjoyed the show, the segment, and we'll see you next time.